that was enough time for you to get a good head start on this. Uh, let's start out with getting some help here from Josh Wood. Tell me something about this graph, Josh. Awesome. What does it factor to? Okay, let's double check that. Is 5 times negative 1, negative 5? Yes, it's 5 minus 1, 4. Yep, so that's factored correctly. Nice job, Josh. But what happens as soon as you factor that? What can I do next? Toss out the x minus 1s. What does that tell you guys? Whole at, and this is where you got to be careful, is whole at, whatever makes that zero, which would be one. Sometimes people would say, hold it negative one. Well, negative one doesn't make that zero, right? So good job, hold it one. So I'm gonna just graph what was left over here, okay? We just have the graph of one over x plus five. Well, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, the last one we did was one over x minus three. What did that x minus three do? How did it shift the parent function? It went to the left three. Wait, hold on. I have to go back so I don't have It was x plus three. Okay, thank you. The x plus three shifted it to the left three. Well, now we've got x plus five. What do we think is going to happen? Shifted to the left five. Okay, that's, that's what I think is going to happen. Let's just check that. So, Peyton. Tell me something else about this, and then Beyonce, you're going to tell me something, and then and Delina's going to tell me something. Okay, Peyton, tell me something about 1 over x plus 5. Good job. Nothing can make the numerator 0, so there's no x-intercept. Oop, that's in the wrong spot. There we go. Thanks. All right, so now let's go to Beyonce. Tell me something about this graph. Awesome. Angelina, tell me something about this graph. Um, the vertical asymptote is negative 5 because that's what makes it Awesome. So x equals negative 5. Let me graph those in there. So here's negative 5 as a vertical asymptote. And then we also said the y-intercept was 1 fifth. All right. Okay, last but not least, we need that in-behavior asymptote. Tara, what is that going to be? Awesome. How come? Sorry, I interrupted you. Because why? That would be 1 is less than 3. Great. Good job. Okay, now a common question on this is, how do I know whether to graph above or below? And the answer is you plug in a point. On the right side, we've actually already plugged in a point. What point was that? We plugged in 0, and we got 1 fifth, which is positive. So that tells me what's going on here. I'm above. Oh, that was not a great graph. Had to go smoothly down there, right? But it's hard to draw here. Okay, so then what's going on the other side? If it was above here, it's going to be down. How could I check that? Well, if you want to plug in a point, you can. Now, technically, there are key points right here. Like when I graph 1 over x, the point 1, 1, and negative 1, negative 1, those are key points they'll just get shifted to the right or left three. All right, were you able to get this graph on your own? Awesome job. Do you have any questions on that? Yes, Izzy. Okay, good. Yes. Don't forget the whole. So now, that was that's just 1 over x plus 5, but that's not what we were given. So we're going to take, I'm going to go to get my eraser out, and I'm going to go to 1 and put a hole there. Now we're done. Good job. Any questions? All right, so now this is actually what I'm teaching my 1050 kids right now. Um, I'm going to just show you how we would take this to the next level. It's really not too bad. Just kind of watch what we're going to do here, okay? So the next thing that you're going to be asked is to talk about inequalities with this. So it, it'll give you the equation, it'll say, graph this, but in the end, I want to know, 
when my function is what? What does this say right here? Good, so if it's greater than or equal to zero, okay? So that's saying it, I graph it, right? But then tell me when is it greater than or equal to zero? Well, if I gave you guys a pen and I said, come and trace when this is greater than or equal to zero, what would you be tracing? Where is this graph greater than or equal to zero? Well, we're going to get out up here. I'm going to say, is this point greater than or equal to zero? All the way to there, right? Because another way of saying greater than or equal to zero is that it's above the x-axis, is that it's positive. Was it positive all the way to there? Now over here, it's going to be doing that same thing, but it's going to just keep coming and coming and coming. So I'm going to write it like this. Isn't that such a fun feature? Except will it erase? Let me erase it. Okay, so now, how do I answer that? Well, where was this greater than or equal to zero? It looks like there was a vertical asymptote here from negative two. So from negative two to one, it was greater than zero, right? Now, I don't include this point because it's a vertical asymptote. So when I'm writing this out, how do you not include a point? With your parentheses versus brackets. Use a parentheses. So, man, come on. I don't want you anymore. So I would write this. Okay. <laughs> Now it's just mocking me. Let's try a different one. I'm going to just write it out in smiley faces. Okay. So from negative 2 to 1, it's greater than or equal to 0. Now I included 1 because it was an x-intercept. Is an x-intercept equal to 0? Yes, we're okay there. And for this one, I would just say from 3 to infinity, it's going to be above the x-axis. How do I join those together? We talked about this before. If you put a U, the U stands for union. It's how you join two intervals together. Okay, this, is, this would be how you would answer this question. Basically, I would give you the equation, you would graph it, and then when you're done, you'd say, when is that greater than or equal to zero? Okay, so that's an example. Let's say this was yours right here. I know the graph is kind of small, but Talk to your neighbor, when is this graph? And I'm not even going to say what that is. You figure it out. Go. Okay, guys, so let's, let's talk about this one. How is this one different? First off, this is saying f of x is, the last one was greater than or equal to. This one is less than. So I'm visualizing that on my graph. What does that mean? When this is what? Before we said it was above the x-axis, above or on. What would this one be? Okay, I'm going to give my little, lap, I don't know what to call this thing, but it's a think pad to tau, and you're going to highlight when is that below? I want you to just trace when it's below. Okay? Where else is it below? <laughs> See, it's hard to write all these things, right? Give me some credit here. Now, you're pretty close. This is when it's below, except there, it's kind of hard to tell on this one. There are x-intercepts right here and right here. So for 
for just this teeny little bit here, it came above. So it was equal to 0 and negative 1 and 1. So if we want to be below, it's going to be these two pieces. Okay? How am I going to write that out? Well, it looks like there's a vertical asymptote here at negative 3. So from negative 3 to 1, those x values give you negative values. It's where it's below. So I'm going to write that as negative 3 to negative 1. What about on the right side? How would I write this part out? Well, let's see. It looks like it's going from 1, and then I've got a vertical class, and so it looks like it's going towards 5. So I'm going to write that as 1 to 5. And then how do I join those together? So this isn't going to be on your test, but it is something that you're going to eventually get towards. Where after you've graphed it, you just need to say, is there a particular piece, when, for what values of x would it make the graph be below or above the x-axis? And that's all you're doing there. Does that make a little bit of sense? Just to prep you guys for when I have you in 1050 next year. And I say, remember last year when we talked about this, and you'd be like, oh yeah, I remember. Sound good? Okay, so not only does that wrap up today, that wraps up this unit. So what you need to do now, I'm going to give you the rest of class to work on this, and then I'm also going to go over like missing work with you guys. What are we doing on Wednesday? Review because what is Friday? All right, so use your time wisely right now.